Hi everyone, welcome to Marijuana Awareness Training Webinar. This 30 minute webinar is being hosted by Prevention Plus Wellness LLC located in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm Dr. Chudley Wirtz, President and Founder at Prevention Plus Wellness, where you can find out more about uh, marijuana awareness and evidence based programs uh, on our website, preventionpluswellness.com. Thanks for joining us. The information we'll be presenting is what I believe critical for the protection of health, safety, and productivity of ourselves and those in our lives, including children, young adults, and our employees. And just about everything that we once knew, at least what I once knew about marijuana back in the 60s and 70s has changed. And the knowledge is changing very, very quickly. Uh, all you need to do is search the term marijuana, marijuana information, marijuana awareness, and uh, what you'll be exposed to most likely is uh, information primarily from the marijuana industry. Uh, that is the industry that's um, supporting and promoting uh, products for use of marijuana, either for recreational use or for uh, medicinal uh, purposes. And uh, you'll see most of that information, and there's actually a dearth, quite a lack of information that's what I would consider evidence-informed uh, or scientifically based. Uh, you will find uh, information from the National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA. But other than that, there's, um, there's really a lack of, of uh, evidence-informed content uh, sort of balancing um, what you see on the internet. So that was one of the reasons. So we started, uh, one of the reasons for coming up with this webinar, but that's why we started, why we developed this quiz, the Marijuana Awareness Training Quiz, and there's been quite a interest in this quiz, which uh, you can access the quiz and the um, answers to it on our website, again, preventionpluswellness.com. And this is going to, the quiz is going to be the, the basis for our uh, brief webinar. We'll go through each of these 10 uh, question and answer, uh, I, I should say 10 true and false uh, questions and the answers to them. And it's a good, I think, introduction to um, a good number of topics. Again, most of them changing very quickly, even as we speak, uh, including laws and potency. Uh, products and harm potential uh, treatment and prevention. All of this is happening and changing uh, very quickly as um, uh, as the laws change, both in terms of recreation and uh, medical use of marijuana. So let's jump in. Uh, let me just say uh, one thing before we go into the answers, uh, questions and answers, that at the end of this uh, webinar, we will be providing uh, the uh, slides, for those of you that want the, the slides, uh, they will be uh, able you to access them, um, I think probably on our website, as well as uh, a video version, a recorded version of this um, presentation that you are welcome to share with everyone that might be interested. And again, we believe it's uh, for any concerned citizen or um, interested citizen wanting to know what's uh, the latest and what's going on with marijuana and how it can affect them, their children, uh, if they're an employer, their employees. Um, so there's, I think, uh, a great interest and a need for information on marijuana awareness. Question number one on the quiz is, marijuana is a mind-altering drug found only in the sativa species of the cannabis plant, true or false? The answer is false, and before we answer the question, marijuana goes by many names, including MJ for short. The marijuana industry likes the names cannabis and weed. They're less thrilled about the more derogatory names, perhaps dope and pot, uh, but there's a lot of names, ganja, herb, many, many, a crazy number of names uh, uh, that uh, are being used in place of marijuana, but still marijuana is the most commonly used name for this plant, this weed, and this uh, marijuana that comes from this plant is mind-altering drug. It is uh, psychoactive or psychotropic like other um, 
uh, psychoactive drugs, illegal drugs like uh, cocaine or heroin or illegal drugs like alcohol, it does alter our, our perceptions and our thinking. But cannabis sativa is not the only plant species. While it's the most widely used, there are the in, there is the indica plant and hybrids as well. So you've got uh, cannabis sativa, indica, hybrids, and within these uh, major three major species, you've got many many plant strains that are being developed uh, almost uh, every day, and they have these very interesting, innocuous, and uh, promotional types of of strain titles like Cherry Pie, which is a sativa brand, Baba Kush, uh, an indica um, strain, and Girl Scout Cookies is the title of a hybrid strain. Question number two, the main chemical giving marijuana its intoxicating effects is THC or Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, true or false? That remains true, so this is one of the few things I think that hasn't changed since the 60s and 70s. We do know that THC uh, is the most common and the most psychoactive of perhaps um, 100 or more cannabinoids, those chemicals um, uh, in the, um, the plant uh, that we call marijuana. And uh, I've seen some uh, estimates of cannabinoids uh, ranging from as low as 70 to well over 100. Most THC, by the way, is located in the buds uh, or the flower of the plant and then secondly in the leaves. And marijuana uh, also contains many hundreds of other chemicals. So it's not just, uh, you know, an active ingredient, THC. Uh, but there's uh, many, many other cannabinoids uh, or psychoactive ingredients and many other uh, chemicals within this, this weed called um, cannabis or marijuana. Question three, marijuana has the second highest rate of dependence or abuse among all drugs, true or false? That is true, marijuana is ranked only behind alcohol in terms of its dependence. Uh, data from the uh, National Institute of Drug Abuse shows that over 4 million individuals in the United States are experiencing dependence or abuse uh, on marijuana. That is twice the rate for prescription drugs and five, five times the rate for cocaine, just to put it in perspective. So because of the the breadth of use of marijuana in the United States and across the world, uh, we see a, a large um, a degree of dependence and abuse. Question four, marijuana is the most widely used illegal drug in the United States, true or false? That is true. Marijuana is the most widely used in the United States and throughout the world. It's also the most widely used illegal drug among youth. Uh, data from the uh, Monitoring the Future study showed that among 12th graders in the U.S., over a third have tried marijuana in the past year, and over one in five are current users or have used in the past 30 days. Question five. Marijuana can be smoked vaporized, or consumed as a food, beverage, pill, or tincture, true or false? This is true. There are three key ways of ingestion or application of marijuana. The first and uh, perhaps most widely used, well, I'm not sure. That actually is uh, actually with edibles now. Uh, it may not be the most widely used, but it, inhaling is still uh, very common, and that it means uh, by smoking it in cigarettes, which are called joints, in blunts, which are actually cigars. Uh, individuals take a, a, an actual cigar, slice it down the side, dump the tobacco, and, and put the dried marijuana a plant in it, reseal that outer casing and smoke it as a blunt or a cigar. Water pipes is another way of uh, inhaling uh, marijuana, and more recently, vaporizers have become quite popular, or vape pen, and there's an illustration of the Snoop Dogg vape pen uh, in that, uh, to the right of the uh, bottom right of the slide. Uh, 
And those vape pens could be as inexpensive as $70 or less, and they could range for several hundred dollars. And uh, they're like an e-cigarette. Uh, essentially, you're, you're smoking a, uh, a more of a concentrated um, a marijuana uh, THC liquid in uh, this pen. And so you get just uh, the vapor rather than some of the other uh, smoking chemicals like you would. Again, very, again, very comparable e-cigarette to a cigarette, a uh, vaporizer for marijuana versus a smoking uh, a joint or a blunt. There are also edibles uh, that are um, widely available now. Um, these include foods, the traditional brownies and cookies, and more recently candies. There are canna oils or cannabis oils. There's canna butter. Uh, for medicinal purposes, uh, cannabis can also come in pills or capsules. A tincture is a liquid concentrate. So that is applied usually with an eyedropper. It can be put under your tongue. In other words, you can get this concentrated uh, THC uh, sublingually under the tongue. It's um, take it in the body, or can you can take that concentrate and put it on other foods or beverages and so on. And of course, beverages is another way to uh, to consume um, marijuana, and that includes teas and and spirits and sodas and so forth. And then lastly, in addition to being inhaled and and eaten. Uh, you could put uh, the marijuana on your body with salves and oils. So the thinking there is that, you know, you could treat uh, aches and pains and so forth by rubbing it on your um, skin, in which case very little is going to get in and you'll be not very likely to have the euphoric effects that you would if you inhaled or eat uh, the uh, cannabis. Question six, today's marijuana is more potent than that found just a few years ago. True or false? And that is true. Uh, plant THC now is uh, over 10%, 13% uh, is what I've seen as high as. Originally, the plants of the 60s and 70s, the THC level, again, that's the primary uh, psycho uh, psychoactive cannabinoid, um, THC. And it was originally in the 60s, maybe one or two or three percent and now because of advanced growing methods it's uh, as high as 13 percent or more and then there are uh, marijuana extracts which can give thc levels of 80 percent and 90 percent even and these extracts come in uh, terms such as butter shatter wax the different forms of uh, extracted material so it's it's uh, again more concentrated THC, and because of that uh, concentration, that greater strength, uh, there's concern that that uh, can increase the abuse potential and the harm potential. The example that I give is like having a young person uh, drink for the first time, maybe vodka versus starting out with a beer or uh, even wine. And so you could see how this, this concentrated extract could uh, uh, increase the potential for abuse and harm, particularly among young people and um, and and beginning uh, users <clears throat> in those uh, situations where marijuana might be uh, legal for recreational use among adults. Question seven: Marijuana is legal for recreational use by adults in eight states. True or false? And that is true before November 8th, uh, 2016, before uh, Election Day, there, um, there were four states and the District of Columbia where recreational use by adults was legalized, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Alaska. And then after Election Day, four more uh, states were added for recreational use, California, the, by far the largest of all. Uh, Massachusetts, Nevada, and Maine was a very close uh, vote, but uh, it's believed to have been um, uh, voted in. And so the interesting um, uh, list here, California is the most interesting because it's such a large economy, I think the sixth largest economy in the world. And so uh, as the saying goes, as California goes, so does the rest of the nation. So the marijuana enthusiasts in industry 
is thinking that uh, with California legalization uh, that the entire United States will not be far behind. And of course, we're seeing this trend throughout the world. Um, it's believed that um, Canada will legalize marijuana throughout uh, all of Canada sometime um, next year. And there are uh, more than half of the states that uh, permit, um, uh, legally permit uh, medicinal use of marijuana. Question eight, marijuana has been approved by the FDA for certain medical uses, true or false? That's false, marijuana is not FDA approved for any medical condition. Now, the cannabinoid THC, active ingredient within marijuana, is in two current medicines. One is being used for nausea, which is a side effect of chemotherapy for those um, getting chemotherapy for cancer. And the second is for increasing appetite for wasting syndrome for those that have AIDS. But at this point, um, the FDA has not approved marijuana for any medical conditions. Uh, and there have been a lack of, um, you know, rigorous studies of efficacy and safety. And uh, we're likely to see more, you know, more of this now in the future, now that there's this trend toward legalization, um, again, both medical and recreational. And, um, and, and uh, but it's, it's an interesting situation because you have, again, uh, eight states in the District of Columbia that have recreational use of marijuana. You've got more than half of the states with legalized medical, quote unquote, medical use of marijuana, even though there's no uh, FDA approval for any medical condition. And lots and lots of claims for the medicinal, uh, potential medicinal purposes uh, uh, for marijuana. If you, uh, you may have seen uh, Sanjay Gupta talk about this on CNN, and there's been a lot of popular literature about the potential, and I would say hope for um, medicinal effects, but of course, uh, very few of these have been, um, have been studied uh, in uh, well-designed trials, and of course, uh, we don't know about the, the side effects as well, and the potential harm um, in these particular um, uses, whether it be for seizures or, um, you know, more likely pain relief or whatever the case may be, um, all of this has yet to be um, fully studied at this point. So caution is, is the key word here. Number nine, marijuana is basically harmless, true or false. A lot of people feel that's the case, and, but it's false. It is the core myth, uh, and I think that comes primarily from pro-marijuana um, and the industry itself. Uh, there is plenty of evidence. Uh, if you look uh, for um, evidence, informed information and science, that there is harm, particularly among young people and young adults, especially if uh, the earlier marijuana is started, the heavier it's used and the more frequently it's used. And this is the case with uh, any psychoactive drug. I mean, you're going to find that there is um, there's harm, particularly among young people. So we need to be very cautious and protective of young people, especially uh, now that we're seeing more acceptance of use. We're seeing that the Monitoring the Future study is showing that young people are uh, have the belief that uh, marijuana is uh, less harmful than in, in past years. And that uh, oftentimes opened the doors opens the door for experimentation by young people. So norms appear to be changing. Uh, beliefs about harmfulness seem to be uh, reducing. And that's unfortunate because we do know that there is literature that shows that uh, use by young people um, inhibits brain development. Uh, and that's of great concern for young people as the brain develops. is not fully developed until age, I think, 25. So. Uh, uh, this early use can be very detrimental to their 
uh, brain development, cognition, memory, um, uh, even IQ, although that's being debated. So um, of great concern. Physical and mental health issues, a number of them. Social problems. Um, other legal drugs, illegal drugs. So there is the stepping stone theory, this gateway theory, and all I can tell you at this point is that um, that it's very unlikely for individuals to use other illegal drugs without having first used marijuana and alcohol and even tobacco. So, uh, uh, so whether or not it uh, leads uh, to other drugs, it seems to be a um, a sequence that's uh, almost required uh, before moving on to other drugs. So not everybody, in fact, uh, a minority of individuals who move on to other drugs, but they, but marijuana is a part of that sequence to other illegal drug use. Uh, reduced job performance uh, and uh, accidents on the job, and of course accidents on the highway increased uh, likelihood for uh, driving crashes and deaths, and in addition, addiction, both physical and psychological addiction, is um, a consequence of particularly heavy frequent use of marijuana. And lastly, 10, uh, youth marijuana use can't be effectively prevented or treated. True or false? That is false. There are a number of evidence-based prevention pro programs you can Google or search, Bing search or whatever you want uh, with them. The, uh, on the SAMHSA website, the Substance Abuse Mental Health Services Administration website, they have a nice list of evidence-based uh, marijuana uh, use prevention programs. And there are also uh, a number of evidence-based treatment programs, although a lesser number. And you could find those on the National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices, or NREP, N-R-E-P-P, um, and you could search on NREP for those, um, both prevention and treatment programs. And so I will shamelessly now plug um, two screening and brief interventions that we've developed, the Sport Prevention Plus Wellness Program for Youth and In Shape Prevention Plus Wellness Program for College Students. Both of these have are evidence-based there on NREP, the National Registry of Evidence-Based Programs and Practices as Prevention Effective Programs. And you can find out more about those uh, on our website at preventionpluswellness.com. The advantage of them is that they're screening and brief interventions and they could be implemented very cost-effectively. So I don't know how well you did uh, on scoring on uh, these uh, on this quiz. The, Marijuana Awareness Training Quiz, the 10 quiz. But if you got all 10 correct, congratulations. I believe you're a kind of savant. I just made that up. I, I don't believe there is such a thing as a kind of, kind of savant. But I'm just thinking, if you did all, got all 10 correct, that's amazing. If you got one or two wrong, good. But you still may be interested in learning a little bit more about marijuana uh, because there's a lot to learn. And again, like I said, that information is continually changing and evolving all the time. Uh, and if you got three or more wrong, the question I have is, what have you been smoking or eating or vaporizing? So uh, all, all cannabis uh, humor aside, there is room to improve your marijuana awareness if you had three or more wrong. So where to learn more? If you want, if you, if you have it, if you are not a, a cannabis savant, then, uh, you might want to sign up for the blogs and news information and search them on our website. Um, but uh, you can go to this link and just sign up, just give your name and email, that's all we need, and then you'll be on the newsletter list. And we are um, uh, usually sending out two or three or even four bits of really important information each week about uh, the great amount of, of uh, information uh, on marijuana harm and and protection and prevention and um, products and so forth. Then there are uh, evidence-based marijuana prevention programs, particularly the sport and in-shape program. You can learn more of those on our website, preventionpluswellness.com. We have more marijuana awareness training. Uh, and so this introductory webinar is just meant to be that, is just the start, sort of a test of your basic knowledge, and we want to provide more because we need, there's, 
we believe there's a great need for more training in this area. So we'd really like to hear from you. Uh, what are your training needs? What are the areas, interests that you're that you need, and what and, and what kind of training? Do you want online training? Do you want uh, how long do you want the training? Um, you know what, and particularly what topics are you interested in more about? Uh, legalization, either recreation or medicinal? Are you interested more in potency and harm or risk potential prevention or treatment products? I mean, again, there's so much to know and learn, and there's so little uh, evidence informed information out there. And unfortunately, um, individuals and particularly our kids are accessing this online information, and there's there's not a lot of good filters um, protecting young people from accessing this promotional material. So it's essentially, you know, um, you know, like kids used to be able to access uh, tobacco uh, advertising. You know, they used to be exposed to that and 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 alcohol. So in this infancy of this new industry of marijuana. Um, development programs and, and services, products for the most part, um, there's a lack of, um, of laws protecting young people accessing this information, this promotional information, and a lot of it is just this crazy information. It's just completely inaccurate and, and, uh, and really not healthy for young people to access. could be very dangerous for them because uh, if you believe it, you, you would swear that everybody was using marijuana and that you should be using it for everything, not just for medical reasons, but you sh if you're tired, you should be using it. If you need to, uh, a little pick-me-up, you should be using marijuana. If you uh, have a little ache or pain, you should be using marijuana. And, and it's, it's, they're really, uh, the industry is really, um, you know, supporting and promoting a marijuana-centric lifestyle, which is very, very healthy. For young people, again, the key thing to know is that the the earlier young people start, and of course, heavy and frequent use is is very, opens the door to, um, like it is for other substances, problems later on in life. So we do want to protect young people, and then there is the uh, marijuana awareness training quiz on our website. You can get the entire quiz and the answers, and the, some organizations are sharing that with others, and you're welcome to do that. Uh, as well. We'd love to have you do that. So that's it. That's the um, entire uh, quiz and introduction to, um, let's go back, to a marijuana awareness training. So um, there's a lot to learn. If you have any uh, questions or um, if you have any comments related to this, feel free to send us an email. You could reach us at info at preventionpluswellness.com. You can also call us um, at our office in Jacksonville, Florida. Our number is 904-472-5022. That's 904-472-5022. If you want to give us a call, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Again, we're very interested in knowing uh, what are your needs in terms of uh, marijuana content information, the format that you'd like that information in, if you want training, how long do you want the training, and what are the topics, uh, because we um, really want to uh, help you uh, gain access to the uh, relatively difficult um, and quickly changing um, evidence-informed information that's out there. Thank you for listening. Thank you for uh, uh, coming to this session. If you want the slides uh, to this um, training a webinar, if you want the an actual recorded version of it, go to our website, preventionpluswellness.com, and please share and like uh, and, um, and and sign up for our, um, our our blogs and our news items so that you can get more informed and protect yourselves, your family, and uh, your employees. Thank you again. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.